All right, well, good evening, good afternoon and evening to all of you. Uh, the Environmental and Sustainable Policy Advisory Committee is now called to order. Roll call has been taken by the clerk. Uh, are there any declarations of conflict of interest or any of items listed on the agenda? All right, there are no presentations on the agenda today. There's one item for consideration on the agenda. So uh, I will ask staff now to give a brief overview of the report. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Kristen DeMille, Mr. Committee Coordinator. On um, April 30th of this year, Council passed a resolution uh, requesting that staff complete a mandate and composition review of the SPAC committee along with a few other committees. On July 30th, Clerk staff met with the chair and staff liaisons to review the items. The proposed amendments to the mandate are outlined within the report, and there was no proposed changes to the composition at this time. There were, this report is on the table today to give the committee an opportunity to review the proposed amendments and prior to the report going to the review task force on September 17th. At this time, staff can take any recommendations or questions that you may have regarding the mandate proposals. Okay, can I, um, for, do I let the question first and then yeah, we have no reason? Okay, have so, discussion. so we'll open the floor. I will keep tabs on whoever, who would like to start, if there's any comments or concerns or feelings. And I just lost the meeting. Yeah, sorry. Just uh, raise your hand and I will recognize you and write you down as in, in order. Okay, I don't see anything here. Okay. Uh, can I please have a mover and a seconder to place this on the floor? Okay, David. And was that you, Greg? And Greg, David. Sure. Greg. Let's, let's put it on the floor. All right. Those all in favor? Oh, I do, do discussion. Oh, sorry, discussion? Okay, discussion, please. Um, just raise your hand so I know who to acknowledge first. Yes, uh, through the chair, just to clarify on the motion, the second uh, plus would be passing, uh, would include the recommendations that were included in the report. Uh, that red line version of the mandate that was included in the body of the report, that would be, if there's no other comment, that's what would be passed at today's meeting and would then be forwarded to the committee review task force, just for, for clarification. Oh, David. Yeah, hi, uh, uh, through the chair. Um, thank you. Um, thank you for uh, for introducing the 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 changes. Um, looking at the uh, the the items number uh, for a um, the inclusion of sustainability. I think that's that's a great addition to the mandate. So I'm glad to see that. Um, I uh, I just wanted to ask whether we think that. A, which is advising council and assisting staff with matters related to the, the corporate climate action plans and sustainability, um, whether um, there's an opportunity at this meeting or a uh, an, a, a future meeting uh, to flesh out some some ideas or a work plan um, that we can uh, work to, to, to advise council. Is the intention to do that at a at a, a future meeting or or this meeting? Through the chair, uh, your question, uh, member, is about the climate action plan itself on how to contribute to that piece. Uh, the, my my question is, um, you know, I think it, it's more of a comment than anything. It's um, that um, what what I'd like to see with to to answer a as part of our mandate um that there's there's a work plan identified so that um you know we have a path forward um to to review um uh you know sustainability programs to meet our climate targets i i, I just i think i'm just opening it to our the group to make sure that that a is is broad enough that it allows us to do that so i i, I believe it does it seems that way that we we have some latitude to 
um, you know, to uh, to review those programs and, and to make recommendations. I just wanted to hear what the rest of the group thought. All right, very good point. Thank you, David. Yeah. Anyone would like to amplify on what David has said? Um, Eric. Yeah, and thank then, you. I, I think the only the only thing I wanted to clarify to David's point was um, I think there's milestones within the climate action plan uh, that the city would like to reach. And I think that that's kind of the um, the context that I would be interested in as well um, on behalf of Laurier's uh, stakeholder participation. Um, we have an overlapping plan to some extent as a large employer um, in the downtown core. Uh, we want to be able to see some of these initiatives kind of coincide. Um, and so timelines that are expressed in the plan could be something that we could leverage as a positive kind of alignment. Um, and I think that hopefully that's what David's kind of hinting at is that is there opportunities to kind of identify things that we can do together um, and uh, workflows that could actually uh, um, allow for um, maximization of resources. Um, the gentleman who says Brentford Palace, I don't, I haven't learned all the names yet. He's next, and then I would like to ask a question. Huh? Greg. Greg? Greg's next, and then I'd like to ask a question. Right. If I may. Thanks. I haven't figured out how to uh, change my name online here. Um, I guess the, the place I'd want to go with this is, is when we talk about sustainability policy and advisory, uh, where that stops and where that, where that finishes. Um, and, and I guess what, I, what I'm thinking in, in my head is when it comes to things as simple as procurement. So it's more expensive to buy an electric golf cart than a gas one, right? So we have 60 odd gas ones running around the, uh, running around um, the, Gretzky, uh, the Gretzky course. Um, if those have to be replaced, are, 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 is this committee prepared to say, those should really be electric? regardless of the cost. Is that is that part of the mandate? Is it part of our mandate that as they rebuild the um, um, the storage facilities and the uh, the maintenance sheds out there that we insist that um, uh, uh, electric uh, charging stations be added? That's you know there's a significant cost to that, but to my mind that fits into the sustainability program. With uh, with the city, do we have a role when it comes to design and procurement for major projects like that? Okay, so we'll work this back. Yeah, sorry, um, through the chair. Uh, if that's addressed to staff, I can answer that question. Some of the ones that were raised. Um, typically, with this mandate, the way that it's written right now, staff would come with reports that have anything to do with recommendations to the community or climate change action plan which we've already developed so as part of that plan we have an annual report that comes to us pack at the beginning of the year stating that our targets are net zero by 2050 we want to achieve 30 percent emissions by x date 50 percent by x date uh whatever it might be depending on what the plan says and as pack at the beginning of the year saying this is our 2024 action plan. These are all the actions we're gonna take. And that action plan will highlight, um, to your point, Greg, the, the different things that we're going to be procuring. Like uh, if we are transitioning to electric in any of these different areas, it would highlight that. And we would come with any feedback. Um, we would come and gather feedback from SPAC before we take that report to council outlining what we're going to be doing. So that's one of those opportunities that's allotted based on this mandate. Um, and the second one is at the end of the year, we typically do a year end action, a year end roundup of the action plan saying, this is what we said we were going to do this year. And then this is the, uh, these are the milestones that we've achieved. And this is what, uh, these are the emissions that we've been able to reduce based on what we've done. And this is the action we've taken for sustainability based on the action plan. Um, so I hope that helps to answer your question. If it's within our action plan, we would definitely bring it to SPAC first. 
And that's the point at which SPAC can comment and say, you know, I saw in your action plan, you're going to be focusing on transitioning fleet. Can you consider this? Um, and that's when staff will be able to take that and report on that at a later date. So that it is still allotted within the mandate. So um, thank you for that. So <clears throat> for, the, for the question then is, um, are you suggesting that we get one crack a year at giving that feedback based on an annual action plan? No, through the chair, we we have those set milestones that we've uh, we've gotten approved through the action plan that those are the regular times we would report. However, if the chair does request or if SPAC does request staff to write a report, um, we just need to receive that request and we would bring that report to SPAC. So if there's something related to emissions reductions or something um, that SPAC would like, like us to consider based on our climate action plan and targets, we would bring that back forward to uh, the committee and cl the clerk can clarify whether that would be through the chair requesting a report or that would have to be a notice of motion. I'm not sure on the procedure, but there are opportunities throughout the year. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, this is my first day today, but um, is there a mechanism um, because under Robert's rules, the chairman really cannot be asking questions, but should I, is there a mechanism right now for me to ask a clarifying question on behalf of all the members of this thing? Because if not, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Lee to take over for a minute for me to talk. So would you rather do it that way or can I just, okay. So we're, we're given a mandate today to, to do a composition review and we've made some changes to it. So in a set, in a sense, we're resetting SPAC. So can we find some sort of ability over the next meet? not today because today is her first meeting, but maybe the next meeting uh, or maybe set, schedule another meeting where we can allow SPAC members to formulate the questions that they want to pose because it is a whole new reset and allow it to come to staff. So then staff could say, sure, you know, we will look at what you said. We, we've looked at your dozen questions and believe it or not, it's actually incorporated in, in what we're planning. So because I don't think any member would want to wait a year to put input. And because we are, in fact, you know, trying trying to justify our existence, you know, moving forward and changing our mandates and our composition, I think we should allow the members to get what they need to put on the table. So it is going to be a, a much more functional year for us because if there if there's going to be a hindrance that nothing can happen, there's not going to be much moving forward, I don't think that's going to give a mandate to the, the committee to be effective. Pardon me, I know Robert's rule says I shouldn't be advocating, but I'm advocating on behalf of the, of the committee. So I'm gonna stop. Um, if anybody wants to comment on what I just commented, I was just trying to reiterate and bring your points forward so we could maybe put it on the docket. So let's have staff answer that, I guess, first, because I think that's that's your role now. I put that question up to you. Through the, the yeah. chair, uh, yeah, through the chair, if I, I'll just clarify too, uh, through the way that the mandate is designed and the purpose of these types of committees, it is an advocacy role. So if the clerk can clarify language for me as well, because I'm not too familiar, but um, if it there is something that SPAC would like us to consider, they can't technically direct staff to implement a program, for example, but they would provide their advice and advocate on it. And then that report would be sent to council for consideration. So if there are these different things that and um, projects you want us to consider, technically we're not, we can't take that as direction as staff, but that would go as um, advice or a request of council to consider and council would then direct staff it's, if that's something that they wish to do. Um, so I hope that helps to clarify as well. Anybody? Greg here. Oh. Um, uh, 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 to the chair, I, no, I appreciate uh, I, I appreciate uh, what you're suggesting and and support what uh, what you're putting through. If in fact we're we're doing a bit of a reset, then I might suggest that we actually take a step back and and. Go back and look at review that action plan at, at uh, the team's earliest convenience, and perhaps within this group, rejig or relook at what it is that we might want to uh, 
you know, to put on the table going forward. If for no no the, if for nothing else, then a review of you know of that action plan for the year. Okay, thank you, Greg. The, through the chair, sorry, um, we did provide a review last cycle of SPAC where we did look at the climate action plan, and we still have to take those. I'm not sure if the clerk s sent the minutes. I think the minutes were included in this this packet. Yeah. Um, but if that's something that the committee would like a report on, again, staff would be happy to take that direction. Uh, three years to chair, then, then forgive me. I just, I just missed that. Uh, perhaps I just missed that that action plan or, or that uh, or that review. So, I'll, you know, shame on me, and I'll, I'll go back through the the notes to find that for myself. Sorry, Councillor Martin, you were you had your hand up before. I apologize. No problem. Thank you. The one of the points of an advisory committee is if somebody in the committee has an idea they'd like to put forward, they can bring a notice of motion and then deliver a, a resolution at the next meeting. Uh, for example, if somebody wanted to suggest that when the golf carts are replaced at the Walter Gretzky Golf and Learning Center that they replaced with electric, then you put that in a resolution. You bring a notice of motion and then the next meeting we'll discuss it and vote on it. If it passes at this committee, then it goes to council for uh, as, as a, a suggestion from this committee. And then it's up to council whether they agree with that or not. And then they'll direct staff uh, to either ignore it or, or to act on it. So and any idea that anybody has, I mean, that's the whole point of this committee is to bring ideas forward and make suggestions to council so that we can make Brantford a better city. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sir. Through the chair, if I may add uh, to what Councillor uh, Martin is uh, saying, um, and I think that what we're trying to accomplish here, from direction uh, of the committee review task force and council, is to ensure that the mandate uh, covers the topics that the committee wants to discuss. And I think that that's what we're trying to achieve here: is ensuring that if we're going to be talking about golf cars, if that 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 is in part of the action plan, uh, climate action plan, so the committee can bring uh, a notice of motion forward and then go through the process. Because if it's not in the mandate, then it would be hard for the committee to act on it or make any recommendations to that effect. So um, if the committee, um, what, what the committee, I think, uh, should uh, look and, and members when providing comments about the motion that is on the floor is to ensure that whatever is there covers any aspect of the work that the committee wants to cover, wants to, wants to go over. Yeah. So if I may be bold enough, if, if someone in new business can put a motion, because I know we're, we're motioning around for this, but if someone put a motion to have a discussion, a much more substantive conversation that will encompass everybody's points of view and give you enough time to digest and review, then that's something that could be a topic at the next meeting for us to talk. No? Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, we have a mover said we have a discussion. Is there any more discussion before we go to the vote? Oh, okay. okay. So, so um, we reset the thing. We have a vote then? All right. All those in favor? Heard. 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 We're going to send that then? Okay, so, so in 5.1, the environmental sustainability policy advisory committee, June 13 minutes, minutes. And, and have a group second seconder to adopt these minutes. minutes. How long is this question from Lee? Lee? Or are you leaving the building? I'm sorry, something's just happened and I'm catching a lot of echo. I'm not sure if anyone else is experiencing that. I'm not on. We're, We're going to check, check on that here. Might help if people that are on the meeting virtually that aren't talking could mute their microphone while they're not talking. Okay. 
Is this that right, Emily? No. I'm no, it's not. I I can I can make out words, but it it is uh it is a little difficult. And it it just happened mid sentence to you as well. It it was I could hear you fine, and then it just skipped over. I, if no one else is experiencing, that's fine. I can I can work through it. Uh, it's happening on my side too. Through the chair, I believe the only item that we have left is it. If there are no comments, if we can confirm if there are no comments on the minutes, we can take a vote and then adjourn the meeting. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we, if we if you heard that, but the only thing on target is the uh, uh, the vote for minutes. So if there's a, if there's any commentary or anybody has any comments, um, we can go straight to vote and adjourn the meeting. So is there anybody would like to talk about the minutes? Then we'll try to fix this. Echo problem even further. It it's been corrected. Oh. Oh, we need a move Sorry. Move a so we still need a mover and a seconder for the motion, and then yes. So Councilor Martin, my friend here. Sorry, Keith. Keith. All right. All those in favor? Okay. Yeah. All right. Seeing that there's uh, no resolutions. Uh, no new notice and uh, resolutions or notice of motion. Uh, does anybody want to put anything under new business or should we go to adjournment? Can we dis can we discuss the notice of motion just to make sure it's it's done right? I I was wondering if um one of the notices of motion for the next meeting um it would be to review the the milestone aspects of the um of uh the existing corporate climate or action plan um just to see if there are any milestones coming up um and um and if if there's some discussion about um some steps that should be taken towards those milestones um or an, a, an update a, kind of an update on the on the near term um uh, milestones i guess right so the next one's coming up I I don't know how to how to how to necessarily phrase that, but I think it was just I'm trying to summarize what uh, I believe Eric mentioned about that uh, the um, WLU has has milestones as well, just to see if they dovetail at all. That was kind of the the thought it was to kind of compare the the milestones and see where there's some um, some synergies there. So through the chair we can um to member uh Kilster, we can uh take the what you're saying offline and we can walk you through the process of notice of motion to ensure mm -hmm. that if that's what uh, you want to bring forward you can do so at a future meeting mm -hmm. for sure yeah so and, and yeah it can be a it can be through an email or, or something like that as well or yeah. okay sure yeah, we, yeah, we can we can talk that. offline about that just to make sure it's the right process so thanks thanks for clarifying Anyone no else? Further questions from me. Sorry. I didn't want to say it, but I just thought I'll ask. Is there any any other questions? Yeah. All right. Before we adjourn, I just wanted to say thank you to, to everybody here. I know that we spent um, a period of time to 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 get back in track and to get back to where we'd be. And one of the things that that I, as part of this whole uh, review and uh, and mandate was to look at. Um, filling the gaps of where we we need members who who want to be and be here, but at the same time we also want members to to attend. So if you know of anybody who wants to join us back, um, we right now I don't think have an opening yet, but I know I'm actively trying to go through our our mandate. And one of the one of the points of the mandate was to invite someone from Six Nations Polytechnics, which that is on me, but. Um, I believe that there will be an opening or there will be an opportunity to fill uh, an open position soon. And if we know that there are people that want to be part of this committee now that we're back on track and going in the right direction, please let us know. And if there's any any issues, let's let's know because I want everybody to be you know uh, inclusive and part of the part of the process as we move forward. Huh? I think
All right. Seeing the, the, the I guess I guess adjourn it or yeah. Okay. So seeing the meeting is now adjourned. We'll have meet again on October seventeenth. Um, but between that time, please let's all communicate with each other if there's any feelings or concerns. And uh, again, thank you for for being here and doing what you do.